I got to go back to Colby. I wake up this morning. I read a headline. I think I was at bloodyelbow.com. Colby Covington has been banned from Misha Tate's show. Okay, I got to click on this. What could have Colby done to get him banned from his show? I have to start with that. And I will tell you guys this, and you know my relationship with Colby. It's in full disclosure. However, if Colby is a turnoff for you guys, or he is a turn on for you guys, if he is a loose cannon and you don't know what's going to happen and you hate him for it or you like him for either way, if this is the rap on Colby, okay, I would have to tell you, when you invite him on your show, it is incumbent on you that you know what you're getting into. If Colby were to come on this show today and do or say something that was off color or provocative or shocking, I don't get a color myself, Mr. Surprised, when it happens. I lined up the guest. I brought him on largely hoping that something like that would happen. And that the show and the interaction that Colby and I have would be provocative, would be baffling, would perhaps be humorous, but it would be entertaining and interesting through and through. I, I, I just don't think that anybody gets to have Colby on the show, have him say something, and then deem, oh my goodness, that was over the lines. I can't believe you did that. Isn't that kind of the point? I mean, isn't that kind of the point? Don't we get it at this point and know, hey, this guy's interesting. This guy's fun because he's interesting. Oh, and by the way, who knows what he's going to do or say? I think that it's, it would be a little bit high-handed of me if I was to have Colby on and then after the fact deem that he was inappropriate. First off, who am I to judge? First off, I mean, in fairness, who am I to judge? And I will see this mistake made in the world of entertainment over and over. It just seems to me that if you have a non-spoken deal, which is I've got a show and I've got a big audience. Oh, by the way, the audience likes to hear from current active fighters in the MMA realm. I'm going to have a current active fighter on the show. It would seem to me that he would get to say his piece, whatever that was, and I would get to disagree with him, agree with him, pass it completely. But I don't think that I would then get to come out from a high-handed approach and say, we won't have any of that here. And I do seem to see that. Now, guys, look, there's, of course, lines to what I'm saying, right? There's, of course, a responsibleness if he was to come out again. Of course, there's a responsibleness. I'm just saying if somebody comes out and they're a little bit hard or they throw it in my face, they want to kick me in the face a little bit. I made a living doing that. I made a living doing that to other guys. If it's going to happen back to me, I don't get just because I have the power of production and the power of editing. I don't think it would represent a large integrity for me to censor that and not put it out. I don't, even if I'm made to look a fool. Even if he came on the show and made me look a fool. Remember when I made Dan Levitard look a fool? Remember when I did that? Multiple times. Because his intelligence is nowhere near on track. He thought he pocketed a few things. Didn't know MA very well. Thought this guy can get some clicks. And tried to make me look stupid on his show. And I threw it back on him. Remember that? Well, guess what Levitar did? He aired the show. He then cut it into a clip. He put it on YouTube. And guess what he titled it? Chael Sonnen makes Dan Lebetard look stupid. And he put it out. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. He came at me. He tried to make me look a fool. I turned it on him. I mean, that's just what happened. He was a sport about it. Okay. I tried to do something. You flipped it on me. But I am going to let the world see it. I'm going to let this world see what I tried to do and what ended up happening in its entirety without an edit. He had the ability 
to make a phone call to somebody. Hey, could you put that out? Hey, could you not? Hey, let's burn that. He didn't do that. There's an integrity in that. And guess what? I would go back on his show anytime he wanted me, regardless of the tensions we had, because I can trust him. What more do I want? What more do I possibly want from a guy? Now, I am not looking to bury the, uh, Misha Tate. It's not a Misha, Misha Tate is wonderful. And there could have been maybe Misha pulling the strings. It could have been a producer. It could have been somebody over at Sirius that owns the show. Might not have even been Misha's call. I don't know what happened there. But I will share with you that in the world of entertainment, I have seen this mistake made many times. I see it made in Hollywood many times. I have seen rappers come out and do it. Other artists come out and sing about and do this. Where instead of entertaining the audience, which is their one and only job, they will decide they want to preach to the audience. They want to deliver a message to the audience. They want to influence the audience. And all of a sudden, their records don't sell. And all of a sudden, the theaters are empty. And they're not getting booked, and they're not getting quotes, and they're not getting offered any new scripts and roles. And they call their manager up and goes, what happened over the last nine months? My career is totally different. And the manager has to tell them, you started preaching to people. Instead of just singing the song, you started delivering a message. You started letting them know who you are and what you're about. And they had better agree with you and they had better think what you think or else they're out of the club. It's not entertainment. There's rules. I'm not saying to be irresponsible, guys. Don't come back and me think of it. There's things that you can't say. There's words that you can't use. That's not what Colby's known for. That's not what Colby does. Colby goes out and has fun and he pushes the envelope and then he goes back in the gym and he works his ass off and he comes out and he does the best he can in competition. It's not a terribly fun life. It's extremely hard. It's extremely dr driven. He hasn't been to a party since I don't know when. I mean, I can just tell you that. I know the life. He gets up to an alarm clock before he wants to, puts his shoes on, heads out the door, ch -ch -ch -ch, gets his miles in. Avoids fast food. Avoid, I mean, look, I could just go through a lot of stuff, but it's a very tough life. And it requires a lot of discipline and dedication. And when he comes out and he talks to you guys, yes, he has some fun. Yes, he does. And yes, he is looking to upset some people and hurt some feelings. That's true. But he's in the right business to do that. You, it'd be very wrong to look down on him for that. I mean, I could tell you some stuff where you would go, whoa, chill. What are you, sinister? What are you, a terrible person? You want to break somebody's arm? What kind of person? You want to go punch somebody in the face and hope that it breaks their nose? What's wrong with you? And I go, well, yeah, but time out. The person I'm talking about is a fighter. That's what the rules are. In fact, not only is that allowed, that's encouraged. In a very small, in a very regulated in one sport, walk of life. And you would have a different opinion. You wouldn't go, oh, okay, you're a sinister and dark and twisted person. You're describing a prize fighter. Yes. Yes, I am. I am describing a prize fighter who not only uses his hands and feet, he will also use a microphone. He doesn't want to go back in an alley and fight somebody. He wants to do it in an arena full of people watching. He's a prize fighter. He's a competitor. And he's an entertainer. I could not imagine having Colby on my show and then painting my color, Mr. Uh, Mr. Surprised, that he said something. Or he turned the gun on me. Maybe he would do that but I've done that to other guys. I had a moment, to personalize this, I had a moment on ESPN. I don't know if I've shared this with you, with you guys. John Jones will not do an interview with me. He will not do a segment with me. Now, I found that very underhanded of John because I work for ESPN. So that can make me look bad to my employer. You're now affecting my livelihood. So I would never do to John. John and I don't get along. John and I do not get along at all. I would never affect John's livelihood, ever, 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 ever. I would punch him in the face right, I would get up out of this chair and go outside if he would give me the opportunity. And I'd take my punches right back. Believe me, I've, I've tried that game with John, it's not a lot of fun. I would get up right now to go punch him in the face. I would never try to affect his livelihood. 
So I thought it was I thought it was very underhanded. I thought it was even mean when he refused to come on ESPN and do it. But the first time he came on ESPN to let me know he wasn't going to do the interview with me was live. We were on live TV. He accepted the spot. He comes on. He scolds me. Only talks to Ariel. Exit stage left. And then after that, after he got, now he won't even come back on. Now it's not like Ariel and I can both be on and Ariel only talks to John and I sit there like a fool, right? He just won't come on at all. Oh, is Chael there? Oh, I'm not coming. It's like a punishment. The world's biggest sports network, he won't come on to get his own message out as a punishment to me. A little bit weird. Either way, this is the math that he did. So the day that he did that, the day that he came on live and rebuked me, people had said to me, hey, Chael, you know, were you okay with that? We put that out. We aired that. Are you okay with that? It's like, guys, of course. I have done that to other guys. I do not get to cry and be a little baby because somebody got tough with me in an interview and smacked me in the mouth. Inside, I was a little bit embarrassed. Inside, we're on live TV. at the ah, this isn't great. John Jones, champion of the world. ESPN has the right to invite him on. John Jones has earned the right to come on and say his message. And I thought there's a way that we all should have been able to work together there. And that's generally what you see. I mean, I'll take you back to last week. Colby Covington beats Robbie Lawler. Dana White announces he's fighting Kamara Usman. Okay, great. Fight business. We know what's next. Well, Kamara Usman is now on the desk. For ESPN, he's dressed in the suit. He looks great. He's doing an awesome job. Colby's coming on set. They're going to do this on live TV. How are you going to do that? When these two have such heat with each other. I mean, they got some kind of a confrontation. I think it was the Palms. This was all caught on like an iPhone. Punches were thrown. Can't, I'd have to go back and what, but it was serious. Security was called, possibly even the police. They were both thrown out of the hotel. I think it was the forever. It was a big deal. How are you possibly going to walk them up on live TV on a set? So they bring security. But these guys, even with their tensions, even which is very real, there is nothing manufactured here. This is very real heat between Kobe and Kamara. There's still a sportsmanship to it, right? There's still an understanding that I don't like you and you don't like me. And here we are in this spot that we both asked for, which is going to allow us to both go out and fight each other, which is what we want. And even though we don't like each other, and even though this is very real, and even though we've had trouble in the streets, if you will, we are now business partners. We are now partners. We are going to do a night of business. We are going to make a weight class. We are going to file a protocol. We're going to do the agreed upon licensing and medical procedures, and we will contest this under the unified rules. But the final piece is we will do that at an agreed upon time in an agreed upon location. So let's come up, let's do our TV. You say what you have to say, I'll say what I have to say, and we don't need to get any closer than this. There's something about that that you must respect within this sport. There's just something about it that I will never lose the appreciation of, of the sportsmanship that could go into a sport like this that has very few rules, but it still has honor. Amongst real men and real athletes, you will always have an honor. You will not take something from somebody else. You will try to beat them. You will compete with them for it. You will not try to take something from their livelihood. You will contribute to it. You will wait to the agreed upon location at the agreed upon time, under the agreed upon rules, in the agreed upon weight class. Because you're partners. But once the referee says go, there's also rules and you're going to go. And there's something about that that is very beautiful, but it must be maintained and it must be understood. I don't think that it was fair. I didn't see the interview. I don't even know what was said. I don't think that it was fair to invite Colby on, to have Colby kick a little dirt in your face, 
you decide that he made you look a fool and then not put it out. I also don't think it's fair for me to say this and attach Misha's name to it. I have a feeling that somebody else made that decision. It's just Misha's show. I do not think that you guys should be mad at Misha. And I could be wrong about that. But I know Misha pretty well. She's got pretty thick skin. That's just not how I see that happening. But whoever did make that decision, I think that there's fair play there. Plenty of sports guys go after you. But if you try to come back, then they don't want to be a willing participant. I had one of these things happen. I was promoting a submission underground. And it was John Jones, speaking of, versus Dan Henderson. A great match. And a sought-after match. And Dan had already retired, but UFC 151, I mean, it had the draw, just had all this different stuff where it didn't matter if these guys were going to go out and arm wrestle. You wanted to see those guys go, whatever they were going to do, you wanted to see them do it, and you wanted some closure. Somebody to get their hand raised and somebody to not win. Okay, great. So I had some guy call from Seattle. I agreed to do his show, and it was a pre-taped show. And this guy didn't know which way was up. I mean, he didn't know anything about anything in terms of MMA, grappling, boxing, combat of any kind. And I let him know that. I did let him know. I mean, he had said some stuff that was so off the wall. Now, that doesn't make him a bad guy. It doesn't even make his show bad. I don't know this guy's history. Maybe he's a sports guy, but he mainly covers baseball and he was given MMA a chance. I was grateful to the numbskull. But when he was saying stuff that was so off the board, you got to call him on it. There's no other way to do an interview. Can't just play along as he's got his facts all upside down and backwards. You got to call him on it. And he had said something to me on there. He goes, you know, I really like covering MMA. But uh, so many people tell me not to do it that I just don't know enough about it. And that's when I took the, I mean, he got like seven or eight things wrong, including my name, not for nothing. But he, he welcomes on, you know, Shale Sonnen or whatever he calls me, which is very rude. Uh, so he finally tells me, yeah, pe people tell me I shouldn't cover this, that I just don't know enough about it. And that, that, that was a door I saw. I said, man, th those people are giving you good advice. You, you haven't got the foggiest idea what you're talking about. This is kind of a unique sport. It's a niche sport. Our fans are hardcore and they're also really well-educated and there's not a ton of them. If you do better in baseball, go do baseball. But our fan, they know what's going on. We've only got a few outlets for information. We love it. There's not enough of it. There's not enough Bellator and enough UFC on TV, as much as there is. And they're starved for it. They just know what's going on. We just have a very educated fan. You think my name is Shale. I mean, not for nothing. The people telling you not to cut, they're right. Dumb, dumb. It never saw the light of day. He thought I made him look a fool. He told me off after I told him off. He told me off. Told me what a jerk I was. Wow, people warned me about you. I should have listened to him. I hang up the interview and I'm thinking, this is great. It's going to get a lot of attention. Dan versus John Jones is going on. We plugged it. Going to get a good little plug. Get a good little bounce from it. Great. No, never sees the light of day. I gave him my time. He decided I made him look a fool and he didn't put it out. I'm going, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How do you not understand this? It's a two-way street. Sometimes you're the racket. Sometimes you're the ball. Be a sport about it. Have some balls. I see this lost in entertainment all the time. Quit trying to give people messages. Quit shoving your ideas down their throat. Just entertain. Do nothing else. Write a script. Sing a song. Have some fun. Entertain the crowd. You put it out there. Let them decide. If they like it, repeat the recipe. Come back and do it again. Very basic. For most.